G'day folks, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, so we've got a few little things to get through first and then we'll get onto the tute. Uh, first of all, this is really cool actually. There's a new Visual Studio coming out. Visual Studio 2012 is in beta. I think it's still in beta. And uh, you can download it and try it out for free. This, that's the uh, professional version. So uh, that's, that's what I've been using recently. It's quite cool actually. There's been a lot of updates. Uh, a lot of things are still familiar, but uh, yeah, give it a shot. Visual Studio 2012. Okay, what's a creel is on Facebook? Yeah, I'm on Facebook uh, for this tutorial series. I made a little Facebook page, so go over there and like that if you want. And there's also a website where I've been putting the slides, which um, I'll put the uh, a link to the website and the Facebook into the video description. Okay, cool. So this shoot is going to be about um, data conversion instructions in SSE, and it offers some really interesting uh data conversions it's pretty much all about copying from register to register so we've got maybe the x86 registers to sse registers or sse registers to nmx uh that sort of thing moving data around and casting uh yeah but before we get into that uh we're going to have a little look at mxcsr so this is the um multimedia state register in sse and it's got some interesting bits in it that we want to set. So we'll look at that first, then we'll get on to the instructions. And uh, this this tutorial and the next one, and the one after that, I think, will sort of all be uh, grouped together. And um, we'll finish up with a final tutorial with a, uh, some more uh, examples of assembly. Or well, an example, anyway. It's a factorizing algorithm. Okay, MXCSR, the rounding function, is what we're interested in. MXCSR is one of the SSE registers, and we've got a choice. When we cast from uh, a floating point number to an integer, we've got a choice with how we round. And we specify what we want by changing two bits of the MXCSR register. And to change two bits of MXCSR, what you've got to do, first of all, is store the state of MXCSR to memory. Then you change the bits whilst it's in memory and then you load that altered version back into MXCSR with LD MXCSR. Alright, let's have a bit of a look. So bits 13 and 14 are the bits that we're interested in here. They're the bits that specify the rounding function. Uh, what uh, SSE does when it has to round floating point numbers to integers. And we've got four options since there's two bits. Um, zero, zero. If both bits are zero, then it means round to nearest. And I believe that's the default. So that's um, something like um, 0 0.52 would be rounded up to 1. And something like 0 0.01 would be rounded down to 0. Uh, we've also got um, function number 0, 01 if bit number 13 is set to 1. And bit 14 is set to 0 in MXCSR. That means always round down. We've got function number 10, which means always round up. And we've got function number 1, 1, which is always round towards 0. Or truncate, I believe, which is the uh, regular C++ rounding when you cast from a float to an int. Okay, so how do you set the bits? We use BTS and BTR. This is uh, bit test and set and bit test and reset instructions. Uh, once you've copied MXCSR to memory, like we were saying, with uh, ST MXCSR, you can set the two bits using these two operations to whatever you want. And we looked at BTS and BTR in depth in tutorial 30, if you've forgotten. All right, here's an example. So for this one here, we want to select the function 0, 0, or round to nearest. And we pretty much just want to, um, well, it's here. We've got store MXCSR, and uh, this one here, MXCSR state, is a 32-bit memory location that uh, perhaps I've defined in my data segment. And that copies the state of MXCSR to that variable. And once that variable's in memory, we can use BTR, or bit test and reset, to set bits 13 and 14 to 0. Uh, I forgot to put a comma just there. There's meant to be a comma there, folks. Yeah, put a comma there. And uh, after we've changed the bits that we want, well, we've selected the function by setting both those bits to zero, we load MXCSR state again, just like that. So every cast using these conversion instructions from then on will round using the um, round to nearest function. 
Very cool. Okay, here's another one. Round up. If we wanted to select always round up, so even something like 0 0.00001 would still be rounded upwards to 1. Uh, when we cast, this is the function we want, 1, 0. And once again, we store MXCSR and we pass it the 32-bit uh, memory location that we want to store it to. And this time, we want to set bit number 13 to 0. So we use bit test and reset instruction, MXC MXCSR state and 13. Uh, but this next one, we want to bit test and set. We want to set it to 1. So we use BTS, MXCSR state and 14. Uh, to set that bit number 14. And once again, I've very cleverly left off the comma. So I put a comma there, right there. Uh, and then, of course, you load that altered MXCSR state back into the real MXCSR uh, register. And that'll always round up from then on when you cast. Good stuff. Alrighty, the conversion instructions. This is the, the body of the uh, tutorial. Uh, there's an awful lot of these, and I've wondered and wondered and wondered how to present them. But I think we pretty much just list them all, and then have a look at a few in detail, uh, just as an example. Uh, yeah, so you can prob probably read that. These are the conversion instructions, and they convert between register types, pretty much. Uh, you can convert between x86, MMX, or SSE register spaces, as well as cast floats to integers and back again. Uh, rounding when converting to integers is done as specified by the MXCSR register, just like we went through. Uh, or you can specify normal rounding, which is truncation, by adding a T, an extra T, to a bunch of these instructions. We'll have a look in a minute. Okay, so the general format of the converting instructions, and like I said, there's an awful lot of these, so we're going to have to have a look at a bit of a general format, so hopefully we can remember them. Uh, we've got CVT, and then what you want to convert from, and then you put a to, kind of like elite speak, and then what you want to convert to. So convert um, packed singles to packed doubles is CVT PS to PD. Easy as that, pretty much. Uh, one of the operands must be an SSE register. This is just a limitation of the conversion instructions. Uh, they are SSE instructions, they're not sort of general purpose instructions, so one of the registers must be an SSE register. And you can't convert from packed to scalar. <laughs> Obviously, that doesn't make any sense. You know, convert these 12 packed singles into a scalar single. CPU doesn't know what you're talking about. Uh, all right. And for all converts, floats to ints have additional option of using T. Yeah, we said that. Okay, so here they are. We're just going to list them out one after another. I think I've covered them all, but I'm not sure. We'll soon find out. So converting doubles and singles in SSE registers and memory. Uh, we've got convert pack singles to pack doubles, convert pack doubles to pack singles, uh, scalar doubles to scalar singles, and scalar singles to scalar double. And that's pretty much self-explanatory, exactly what they do. Your uh, packed versions convert, um, you know, a whole bunch of things at once, SIMD style, and your scalar ones only convert the lowest elements. Uh, converting floats to integers in SSE or memory. Uh, I don't know why, but integers are called DQ. I don't know who made these uh, mnemonics up, but integers are called DQ. So, oh, this is packed integers, I think. Yeah, packed integers are called DQ. So we've got convert, um, what, packed integers to packed singles. Convert packed integers to packed, whoa, doubles. Wait a minute. Previous, previous. Uh, convert packed singles to, what's that, packed uh, integers or packed double ints, they're 32-bit ints, and convert packed doubles to 32-bit ints. And the T that I've put in just here, if you have that T in there, so CVT T PS 2DQ, um, that ignores MXCSR completely and it always truncates. Yeah, so they figured that that was a pretty useful function and you don't want to be messing around with MXCSR. Uh, if you just want to truncate, then yeah, you stick a T in there as well. That's pretty cool. Um, converting between SSE and MMX or memory. This is quite cool, really, to copy stuff straight from SSE to MMX. Uh, that might be useful. Maybe you're um, running out of register space. It's unlikely in a 64-bit CPU since we've got um, 16 SSE registers. But, um, yeah, you can copy some data temporarily into MMX, or maybe you want to do some integer manipulations in MMX. I don't know. 
Anyway, M and X registers in this little convert instructions are called PI, PI, uh, packed integers, I guess. So that's pretty logical. CVT PI 2 PS is uh, convert packed integers to packed singles. That goes from an MMX register into an SSE register. Uh, or we can go to uh, packed doubles from an MMX register using CVT PI 2 PD. Uh, and then we've got a few truncates as well. We can truncate uh, these next ones because they're converting from floats to ints. Um, convert packed singles to MMX register or convert packed doubles to an MMX register. Cool. Uh, converting between SSE and x86 is also possible. Um, x86 registers are scalar integers, so we get SI as the uh, little abbreviation for those. And we've got convert scalar integer to scalar single. Settle down. Okay, scalar integer to scalar single. We've got uh, scalar integer to scalar double. Uh, or we've got some converting the other way from um, scalar double to scalar integer and of course you've got your truncate option there if you don't want to use MXCSR and uh, scalar singles to scalar integers as well cool that's a lot of them okay so let's have a bit of a look at uh, some of these in detail just so that we get a bit of an idea of how they work uh, the first example we've got here is convert packed singles to packed doubles so CVT PS to PD is the mnemonic and this is what happens pretty much we've got a uh, single zero over the side here of uh, MMX oh sorry SSE register XMMO and then this is single one two three and we've got doubles zero and one and of course only two doubles can fit in a uh, SSE register so it's the bottom two singles that are actually converted and the top two singles of uh, XMMO or the uh, source operand here are completely ignored. So this will be the final answer just here. 1.5 and 7.3. That's pretty easy. Uh, here we go. So convert packed singles to packed integers or D words. Yeah, the integers are always D words. We're not talking about bytes or anything. They're D words we're talking about. Uh, signed D words as well. Uh, alrighty, so I've written out the whole code here. I'm not sure why. I just felt like it. Uh, I've got a little data segment with um, four singles specified as uh, real four or four byte real numbers which is the same as C++'s float and here's my function, my proc, pretty useless function really <laughs> but um, I don't know, it might be useful uh, alright so the instruction that we're calling here is PS2DQ or packed singles to packed uh, D words and yeah, what's it going to do? So we've got my singles here. These are the singles we loaded from um, memory just here. 15.68 goes over this side here. It seems a bit weird, but that's where they go. And 27.82 goes here. 38.4 goes here. And 9.23 goes here. That's because, of course, this right-hand one we always draw as um, single number zero for some reason. Even though when we're writing out an array, we write it the other way. Yeah, good. What's going to happen? Okay, so the first thing that happens is it goes straight into the MXCSR function. Um, we're converting floats to integers here, and we haven't put the extra T in this instruction. If it was CVT T P S 2 dq then it wouldn't go through MXCSR, it would truncate. But we haven't got that here. We've got, um, yeah, MXCSR. So the f MXCSR function is going to round and we end up with that coming out the other side provided we've got um, normal rounding or function 00, zero in MXCSR 9.23 will become 9 38.4 will be rounded down to 38 27.82 be rounded up to 28 and 15.68 will be rounded somewhere to 16 upwards to 16 okay that's cool uh, convert MMX to packed singles here we go another example what have we done here? Uh, my, my D words, DD5 and 2. Go backwards, would you? Okay, uh, we've got 5 and 2. Actually, I think we stepped through this one. Yeah, cool. So the first thing that I did was moved these two D words from my stupid little array into an MMX register, and they come out as this, 5 and 2. 
set x m m o to all f. Um, yeah, I just did this as an illustration because I wanted to show that um, the convert packed integers to packed singles, and indeed the other convert instructions, uh, don't touch the top of the register if you're converting scalar or uh, if you're converting you know doubles to packed singles. Um, the top remains untouched. So to illustrate that, I've just filled the top with all ones in binary or FFFF in hexadecimal. Okay, well this will be the result of the conversion instruction. Uh, the 5 will be converted to 5.0 as a single, a 4-byte single or 32-bit single precision number, and the 2 will be converted to 2.0 and the top won't be changed. Very cool. And don't forget to call EMMS. Yeah, exit multimedia state at the end. We're playing around here with uh, MMX and the floating point unit probably wants all of his registers and things back so we should call exit multimedia state when we're done with the MMX registers. Okay, so I messed up the end. We'll take it again. Um, we just got one final little thing to go through that might be interesting, and that's C++ casting. When you cast in C++, it actually calls CVT TSD to SI, or cast scalar double to scalar integer. That's if you're casting a double to an int. And um, sadly, it puts the T in there, so it uses truncate all the time. It doesn't go through MXCSR, which would be really cool, because that, that would mean that we could, you know, set the rounding function for uh, integer casts, but it doesn't. The uh, Microsoft thing uses, uh, the Microsoft compiler uses truncate. Uh, likewise, if we're casting from a float to an int, it calls um, convert using truncation, scalar single to scalar int. Alrighty. And that's a lot. Ta. See you later.